So today on uh, our channel, we're taking apart a fully running and driving vehicle to uh, take it apart and make it not drive for a yeah. while. Yeah. And then hopefully better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that moment when you're a kid and your parents are like, don't take that apart. And you're like, Hello, welcome to another day in the shop. Today we're working on the 50. Coming to the conclusion that the best course of action is gonna to be to pull the engine. Various reasons why, they're very mysterious. Let me tell you. I bought some real nice performance parts for this thing and to install them, you need to work on the engine and to work on the engine, it's almost easier to get it out. And also there's, we're doing a master cylinder on it. The master cylinder on these is in the most convenient place underneath the car. So when you're pulling the master cylinder and moving it around and we're gonna have to make new brake lines because it's only a single piston master cylinder right now and the one I put in is dual piston. So we're maneuvering down underneath there, having the engine out is gonna be much easier it's also going to be much easier to work on and much easier for you guys to see uh, us working on it. So Yeah, yeah, and then you said something about painting the engine while it's out too, right? Ah, uh, yeah, well that was actually what led me to this conclusion, right? So pulling it because the heads are unpainted aluminum and I painted this engine. I painted this engine about... Oh my goodness, it's been at least 15 years at this point. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, 15 years ago, paint, I cannot find any match for. So, uh, I've tried various VHTs and different colors and stuff and they've all come out. This is probably closer to what it was when it was new. But this thing has been painted for 15 years and it's heat cycled so much that I think it's uh, probably not the color it was when it was painted, honestly. It probably has darkened a bit. Like cherry. Anybody who knows cherry wood, it darkens as it ages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, so we're gonna pull the engine, that way we can paint it. And uh, yeah, should be interesting. If you guys don't know anything about flatheads, Prepare to have your minds blown. Because if you know anything about modern engines and you're looking at a flathead, it's a whole other ball game. I mean, this will be good. The water pumps are the engine mounts. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be, this will be a total learning experience. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's along for the ride. Yeah, I am. This has got dual overhead cams, right? <laughs> Triple overhead cams. Triple overhead cams. Oh well, let's dive into it. <laughs> Stay with us. Flathead stuff. There's four coolant hoses and two water pumps. This and both is, water pumps fun. are the engine mounts. Wow. Isn't that strange? I had no idea. This is some mind blowing stuff in here, I tell you yes, what. Yes, sir. I'm surprised it doesn't have two radiators. You know what's funny is when you come back to when you come back to engines like this, right? You're like, that is so odd. But then the more you like dig into it and you kind of think about it, you're like, there was actually a lot of simplicity behind that thought process, right? And we've actually sometimes we make things more complicated than they need to be. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? Like I know this isn't a model of efficiency. No, but when you can no. integrate certain things together, you're like, wow, how simple was that? At the same time, if you had to replace this water pump, you're like, man, I gotta replace the water pump and the engine mount. Yeah. So you're like. But it's still easier than in a water pump on a BMW. Yes. Like you have to you're lift the whole engine for this, but you also have less to replace. I mean, dude, it's like. And remove. Right it's like working on a lawnmower. So like. You know how like modern engines have belt tensioners? Mm -hmm. You undo this bolt and you stick a long rod under here and you lift. And that's what tensions the belts. That's awesome. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's actually a 
breath of fresh air, you know? And well, the cool thing is it'll be a learning experience. Coming down! No! <laughs> John, work your magic. We're like nerds out. And your frame, just, your frame just tacoed. Let's <laughs> just think. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I didn't put yours up as high as mine. That's what happened. I think so. The truck is going like this now. No, I put it up as high though as I could get it. Ah, some people. <sighs> so hard to find good help around here. You're lucky you found any. Radiators are draining. All right, so we can take off the carburetor now. Sure thing. Carburetor's gotta come off. Grab an Allen for the cat. Probably take off the front dress while it's in here anyway. I'm gonna have to while it's out, so. It'll probably make it easier to pull too, huh? Yeah, exactly. And get the engine hooky part right down on it. This guy. You know it's important? Really good audio. Just ASMR, we're in the bathroom at a McDonald's. And you're wearing flip flops and your feet getting wet and you're like, <laughs> I'm not peeing. <laughs> Here's a little cool feature from the 50s. So if you push this rod forward, no, pull this forward, my bad. Yeah. That's got like a spring in it. Uh-huh, just goes on a little ball. That's awesome. And then that goes to like a little dog leg, which goes down into the car and into the uh, oh yeah, look. wiring. Coming in handy. Yep. All right. Coming so, in clutch. This is the transmission kick down cable. Mm. Um, it'll come off with this bolt, and then this actually just slides forward and off. Good lord. See, so, that's that simplicity I'm talking about. Yeah, that's also an aftermarket part, but yeah, well, it is. <laughs> either way, man. Oh, look at that. Uh-huh. Would you just look at it? It's so easy. <laughs> just look at it. So this is obviously a four barrel, but it's a uh, Holly 600 CFM, which is entirely too much carburetor for this engine. So when you get on it at this point, it kind of just starts throwing black smoke out the side, so. Like coughing. Yeah, well, it doesn't really cough. It Does just, it? no, it's just, I, I can tell that it's overfueled. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna foul the plugs, so. I mean, it's, in, it's due for a new set of plugs anyway. Uh, I should probably take a picture of that. Okay. Here. You got a phone? Are you laughing? <laughs> yes. Okay, I think I got that on film. Look at what happened to my phone. Oh. <laughs> that is so good. All right, let's see. Ooh. Oh, little tiny mark. Nope, white wiped away. Ah. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna leave this on here even though it is garbage right now. But yeah. Always remember kids, take pictures of how things work. I just took a picture of how this wire goes on. Mm, let's go. Yep. Yeah. One assembly. Okay. Carburetor. Coming out. Check. Oh, oh. You got I always miss one. This thing's still spinning. I'm surprised this thing doesn't get 100 miles a gallon. You know, I've never done the wheel bearings on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, these are the wheel bearings from 1950. I doubt it, but yeah. I would doubt it too. But these are the wheel bearings from 1970. They made it different back then. Yeah. Uh, dude, I've never seen this. Like maybe on my bike. And could you believe the steering is as tight as can be? I believe everybody. <laughs> <that. laughs> Alright, so more undressing has happened. We've got the, this is where the oil filter is actually. There goes the spark plugs and the cap. Uh, this pulls off because 
race car? Yeah, definitely race car. Cool thing about a painless wiring harness is you have written on here. Let's see if you can read that. But that right there says temp sensor. So this is the temp sensor wire and it's written directly on there. That's really on cool. On the electrical sleeving. Is this, does this say carb on it? I believe it's uh, just. Yeah, it says choke. Yeah, there That's you go. That's awesome. So literally all the wiring is made to be simple. Some would say that it's painless. All right. It's ready to be free. Do you want to do the honors or shall I? That is totally up to you. So, flathead motors. You have uh, literally flat heads. But under here, oh, look at how easy that comes up. That was crazy, dude. Under there. Wow, look at gasket. that. How cool is that? So, there's your intake ports for your each cylinder, correct? And then you pull this up, and there's all your valves. There's no lifters. Well, there are lifters, sorry. There are lifters, but there's no rockers. There's no, nothing, no, okay. Did that come out of the head? Or the manifold? This, interestingly, was down here in the valley. Did you find it like over here? Yeah, I mean, let me think. I, th I wanna say it was like this. Well, it's a very good thing we're taking this apart. Will you get me a magnet, please? Yeah, of course. All right, so I worked on this thing as a teenager, right? Like, so if you guys are going to judge me, you can judge me. Dude. Just know that, I mean, it hasn't blown up yet. What I see down here. The hose clamp. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're we're making progress. This is now not in the engine, so I don't see any damage from it being in there. But this is not a race car, and this I am not a professional, so mistakes happen. Just know that I'm making a speech here. Just know that we're human. Yeah. And. Uh, Mistakes happen to humans. So just like that. See, that's probably how it happened. Yep. Yep. And, uh... You know what? Since your dad's not here, we'll blame him. I'm sure watch this video. <laughs> Hal, it's okay. We forgive you. I, I, uh... I definitely... Well, I think I'll take credit for that one. Hey! Other cool. than that, it still looks good. It still looks good in here. Now that um, we've made some lightweight modifications. Right. This is interesting. I don't... I don't quite understand this. Is it tapered more on one side? Or? That's what it was. Yeah, that side's better. This right here this is a very old school thing. So back in the day, they thought heat helps atomize fuel. So they thought heat makes efficiency. This is an exhaust port. This is also an exhaust port that goes up into the intake manifold and heats up the area underneath the carburetor. That's pretty crazy. So, I mean, that was a thing that happened all the way up into the 70s. I think some 80s vehicles, my 1977 J10 out there, which was my dad's truck, has a very similar system where the exhaust routes right underneath where the carburetor went. So to set the valve lash on this thing, you have to actually go into here. And you can see right between this valve spring and this lifter, there's the kind of what looks like a, a bolt or a nut and it's threaded and that threads into the lifter which is in here in here and uh you have to move that up and down with the valve uh fully extended so probably about like this one and then you have to put a feeler gauge between the, the lifter and the valve and that's how you lash the valves for a flathead that is crazy. And then we have to look up the, the specs because this has an aftermarket cam. So we have to check the valve specs for the cam. When we did this camshaft in here, we checked the clearances the first time by doing the lash and then checking the valve clearance in here with some putty. And it was fine 
and then we started the engine it ran great for a while super great and then all of a sudden it started misfiring and we we're like what the hell the valve had grown as the engine uh, warmed mm -hmm. and uh, the valve grew enough that it contacted the head huh. and because uh, in this thing the valves don't contact pistons they contact the head right because it's a flat head in any case we then had to have the thing had to get another valve and have put a new valve in it which was not bad because it didn't destroy anything really but then we had to take these heads and uh, add some chamber height to the uh, exhaust area. So I'm not sure how much we'll actually gain by putting the new heads on, but uh, they'll at least look cool. So. It'll probably sound good too, huh? Like maybe a little bit of exhaust sound? No, you don't think so? They have nothing to do with the exhaust. Well, flow, right? I'm sure they flow better. Flow. Yeah. It's potential. My dad also went in here with these heads, these 8BA heads. Mm -hmm. This is an 8BA Ford flathead. And he went in here with these 8BA heads and did a little bit of basically porting himself where he took down the chamfer between the uh, cylinder area and the valve area. Gotcha. So it's potential. In any case, we're pulling the engine, so let's get to work. Yep. Let's get back to it. Hey, you know what's a good thing to do? Make sure that when you can't find your Sharpie cap, you put it in this. Oh. With the bolts that you were just looking at. You know? It's not the worst place I've ever heard. <laughs> no, I mean, I have put a TV, TV remote in the refrigerator once, so. Now that's impressive. <laughs> I grabbed like everything off the ottoman and I was like, it all goes to the fridge and I put it in the fridge. <laughs> and then like an hour later, I was like, where's the TV remote? <laughs> We're taking off this exhaust. Basically a glass pack that goes down there to a, uh, I don't know, probably 12 inch long tip. There's my shoe for size. But, this side, the hanger actually is broken off and it had an exhaust leak there for a long time. The other side still has intact, but not the greatest setup, so we're going to take it off and get a nice new exhaust. And it goes all the way back there to the back end. That would be nice. I like it. Rear exit. <laughs> There's that beautiful exhaust leak that's been plaguing me forever. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it just never ends. You sure to be efficient about this. Presenting our channel, sponsored by Tidy Cats. Big moment. The engine is sitting free in the engine bay. Motor mounts are, well, the bolts are off. The bolts are off back on the trans. This thing's ready to be free. Sounds like a deal, eh? Sure does. And here we go. Oh, got a movement. All right, so motor is Three in the engine bay with the transmission attached. So now begins the process of getting it out. up <laughs> hey look at that 
she's out. First time in a long time. And she looks it. I mean, she's got some oil stains on her. But overall, looking pretty good. Oh, no. That's just solder. Mm -hmm. That's not. I saw that earlier. It's from uh, doing some electrical repair. So that's fine too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Exciting. Yes. All right, end of the day. Got the uh, motor out. Mm hmm. And. Uh, so it's an engine. Why is it called Ford Motor Company? And it's got motor mounts, but it's an engine. I just thought I wanted to clear that up. Anyway, yeah. end of the day, we got uh, engine out, uh, transmission out. We pushed the truck out to get, you know, the shop cleaned up a bit. Had some spillage, but it's to be expected. But other than uh, a minor mishap, perpetrated by myself. Yeah. I feel this wheel should be coming off the ground, so I'm trying to get it as low a center of gravity as possible while not touching the ground. Turn that the wrong way. You okay? I'm fine, dude. I'm worried, I'm worried about your engine. She's uh, gonna need some love, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And we got it out and ready for it, so. We're gonna paint it Chevy orange. Next video, we'll be pulling transmission apart, uh, probably prepping that thing a bit. And should be good. Yeah. I'll catch you later. Appreciate the four of you mm -hmm. more than any more that uh, come along because mm -hmm. you're the originals. Mm -hmm. You're here for the epicenter. Yep. So. I want you guys to know that you're my four best friends. Hmm. I only have four friends. I guess I'm not his friend. <laughs> 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 <laughs>